to commit yourself to change and challenge yourself to be better than you were yesterday. That's greater than any 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 talent or skill you could possibly have. Uh, for sure. Hey, say what's happening, man? Tip T.I. Harris, your host of Expeditiously. I want to welcome you to the show. Uh, this is the show where we have conversations that's meant to push the culture and the generation forward. And we had those conversations with people who we feel are relevant to the discussion. Now, I guess today is a young partner of mine by the name of Shy Glizzy. Uh, he signed to 300 Entertainment and was a double XL uh, freshman. 2015, all right? He recently released Hefe, Young Hefe 3, an 18 track project featuring the likes of Lil Uzi Vert, Jeremiah, Ty Dolla Sign, and G Herbo, with production by Hitmaker, Zaytoven, and more. Uh, Shy Single, Right or Wrong, gathered 3.4 million Spotify streams and 522,000 YouTube views. He's received Tastemaker praise and it was proclaimed uh, as a boisterous banger by Hype Beast. Shy hails from the streets of Southeast DC and and the 27-year-old rapper just earned his first Grammy nomination with his feature on Gold Link's crew record. Now, being from D.C., uh, bro, first of all, thank you for coming to the show, man. Appreciate and if, if if we ain't speaking to the generation and, and, and speaking on behalf of the culture, this show ain't really, you know, ain't uh, got no sure. purpose. So I appreciate that. Um, now, being from D.C., uh, you started out in Go-Go, right? Yeah, for sure. Early, oh. like 11 years old. Mm. So how did so how do you start out in go go? You do you learn to play I, an instrument? I was or? going to the clubs, you know, like that's the culture. So it was like if you didn't go to the go go, you wasn't cool. And I was always the young cat looking up to the older cats, so just in the mix of them. Right. So I was outside early, like I, I should have vibe. Yeah, it's, too much, it's a big vibe. Man. Hard big to describe too. On, you know, yeah. what I'm saying yeah, anybody who ain't never been to the DC uh, area and, and experience, you know, what I'm saying a, a, a go go turn up, man. You need to get it in your life, bro, because that shit is, you know, like no other. So, so you went from that, and, and at what point in your life did you shift or transition into, you know, when I went to juvenile? They tried to give me juvenile life, and then I was like, man, I got to do something better with myself. And my uncle was rapping, so. I was like, shit, man, you know, I'm a rap. And then I started writing and writing, and when I came home, put it on wax, the city backed me 100%. Right, so you just said in juvenile, you almost got hit with an L. Mm -hmm. um, for what? For robberies, attempts, whatever, like right. all types of stupid nonsense. Now tell me, how did you actually commit yourself to change? You know what I mean? Because I think that's what a lot that what a lot of young people need to understand. Like, at what point? How does that look? How does it feel? It feel great. It's amazing because I felt like I always had a purpose for the things that I did. Mm -hmm. Even the crimes that I was committing, it was for the better. Right. You feel me? Like, it was always for my greater good. So when I had to do this, I knew, like, man, once I put my mind to it, you know, it was going to work out because... You know, I was determined. Right. Now, when I say uh, commit yourself to change, I'm talking about, like, you know, every man, I don't care what walk of life you come from, uh, you, 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 you have a moment where you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, hey, man, it's it for this. Yeah. And, 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 and it ain't going to change until you change. But a lot of time when you, at least when I speak to young cats, they feel like, that's like you know that look like that's the, they're putting on the sucker like suit. a sucker look. yeah 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 and I'm trying to I, I I want them to hear from you being in those circumstances of course they feel like I'm so far gone they ain't got to listen to it from me but nah they listening trust me they listening but but, I, but I'm saying like how I does get, that how does that feel how do you how do you handle that like a G and, and still you know don't sacrifice yourself in doing it because you gotta always be true to yourself and not to others you know like. You gotta be a leader and not a follower, and that's always one thing that I've been from a young end to now. So it's mm. like, it ain't never been what nobody think about me, you know? Right. Like, and that's a lot of people problem, and you know, what you trying to describe. Right. They worried about what someone gonna think. This is true. This is true. I think, and, and that shows a lot of growth when, because a lot of us, we have, you know, we have confidence in, in, in the things that we familiar with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, man, I found, man, even when I was coming up, man, a lot of my partners, they just all of them couldn't make it because they didn't want to leave the block. And it, it ain't that they 
didn't want to leave the block because they were scared of something that's on the other side of the block. They was they they just wanted to be where they, they what they were what? exactly where people know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where folk know you know, and they have a certain respect level there, and they don't want to step outside of that because yeah. it's 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 of discomfort to them. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you kind of adjust to that feeling? <clears throat> getting in the game, I'm still adjusting because you know I'm kind of you one forever foot in, will one be. Foot out. Yeah, you like forever my, will be. My people is. Tied in my family, like my friends, everything around me. It's like I'm all they got, you know. Like I'm right. what they banking on. So I still had those problems, but like I said, I try to motivate them to get on this side of the fence because right. they see, you know, like everybody want to be a rapper now. The biggest gangsters, the killers, whoever. Like it's like rap, you know. Like it's a whole other world over here. Like we already done all of that, you know. Like now it's time to get some money. You know, live True. life. I mean, that make a lot of sense, bro. And I, you know, I, I salute you for openly just, you know, commend yourself to change. You're saying I used to be like this, man, but I flipped the switch and I turned my life around. And can't see that if, if I could do it, if you could do it, then, then they, they can, can do, do it. it. You know what I mean? A lot of sure. a lot of motherfuckers feel like they stuck. And any of these young niggas can do it. Absolutely, they absolutely. got to know that. And you made mention of uh, you said that you know you from DC, but you also you know made me aware of the fact that. We had some mutual acquaintances. Mm -hmm. you, you you came up, you know, rhyming with with uh, Pee Wee, the Twenty One before he was blown yeah. up. Yeah, Shot the Lord God, Baby. all of them. Yeah. Shot. any of all of them. Everybody that's running around out here, like they close peers. I fuck with that. So, heavy. So you was a Rallo, part of that. That's like one of my best friends of life. Free Rollo, by the way. Free Rollo, yeah. for sure. So that was the that was the 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 2013-14 wave of you know the youngsters who. Yeah. Were demanding their time in this shit, and you saying you you was mixing in them circles. That was right around the time. Yeah, you got we was in the closet um, recording my first mixtapes. I was in Pee Wee Longway house, me and Thug in the closet. Uh, yeah. Thug. So, but 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 so 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 that was right before you 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 out of that year, from the work you put in at that level, that earned you a double XL freshman nah, of the year cover. Right, right after that, I started to um get this the I'm so awesome record bubbling up and. That took off, and you know, like all the labels were just going crazy. I, then, you know, I did a distribution with 300. I'm still independent though to this day. I ain't never signed to nobody. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, why was it important for you to stay independent? For my people, like I felt like, you know, it was, it was my responsibility to put DC on the map, and not saying that people didn't do that as well, but. The, where I, the side that I came from, you know, like just the other end, mm -hmm. like we was talking about, I felt like I had to represent my culture in a good way. And you know, like, I felt like if I would've gave that responsibility to another man, mm. then I just would've been representing what he stand for, you know, so. Got it. I just always wanted to put me and my people on, make sure they eat too, not just me. I can dig that. I mean, I think that, uh, I think right now, man, is just giving that, the game has become so direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, it's in an artist's best interest to maintain, yeah. you know, as much equity in as his he art can. as possible. For sure. So you, you, you made Freshman, and from there, you uh, you released the the More Hair Face. You, this is the, the third of the trilogy has been released this mm -hmm. September, correct? Yeah. Um, how does this one compare to the other two? Growth, but comparison, like, um, I guess the melodies and, you know, just bringing some of the flows back and just, you know, showing people that I'm still connected to the same space that I was in, you know? So. Do you find that people still kind of like expect you to replicate the shit that you've already For done? For sure. For How sure. do you deal with that? Because they always say, like, we need that old shot glitz. Yeah. Need that, like. They do that to you, too? Yeah, for sure. I thought it was only That's me. every artist. So, I, so how do Everyone you deal that, with that? Everyone that does make it long enough to you know, yeah. talk about it in that way. But, you know, like. How I do deal, you approach that? Man, I just, like, I don't know. I just try to do me to my best ability. And the people that do appreciate that growth, you know, that's how, you know, I reciprocate it. But. When they do say that, I do sometimes try to go in the studio and try to 
see what they talking about, try yeah. to chase that sound. They, but still like, ain't, they still ain't said it fast. Yeah, they, they don't they even hear it. They don't even know. Like, cause it's like, it's still the same thing, but I switch it up or like, you know, it just, it's just, a, it's a growth, like I said. Right. But a majority of the people say it. You know, but the thing is, man, they, they, they don't know what they want until they hear it. You know what I'm saying? They could tell you all day long, yeah, yeah, man, we want this, give us that. But they don't know. They don't know what they need until we get it to them. No, they gonna give it, they gonna like it however you give it to them. Well, you know, they, 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 they raw. The motherfuckers who gonna hate gonna find a reason to hate regardless. Yeah, you know, you can put, out, you can put out some perfect hate. shit. Motherfuckers who got there got something to say, they gonna have something to say regardless. But that, that, that's a reflection of them. That ain't really got much to do with you. Um, one of the things I always thought is we came into this shit showing motherfuckers how how it's going from where we're from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I came in the motherfucker. I never asked nobody, so how should I, you know, or yeah. what should I? Mm -hmm. I came in the motherfucker showing you I'm wearing my hat like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 kicking my raps like that. And you know, this is me. Yeah, this is just how it is. And if this is what brought me success, I came in here showing you what the fuck it is with me. I'm not finna wait to this point in the game and let you now tell me what, what the fuck should be going on with me. The tail shall never wag the dog. Not ever. You dig what I'm saying? And as long as you keep that shit in mind, shit, bro, you got you you gonna be all right, man. You gonna be all right. Now, uh, like many of us, bro, you know who came up. You know, in this shit, you grew up in a single parent household. You know what I mean? Just you and your mom, right? Yeah, and my little brother. Yeah, yeah I got one brother. Yeah. So, so tell me, how did <coughs> how did life in a single parent household? How did that affect you as a father? Because you know, I hear your son on your on your shit, right? Yeah, my son, man, he's special, man. He's one of a kind. He just turned six. Right. Yeah. So, man, it affected me because I ain't have a dad. My dad died when he was eighteen. I was four months. You mm. know? I'm born into this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't no cap on nothing that I do. So that just, like, motivated me to, you know, like, be connected to my son, like my best friend, like one of my homies, yeah. everything. Like, that ain't just like my son, you know? So, like, I don't, my son don't want for nothing in this world because it's like, I know how it is to go without, you yeah. feel me? So, like, that was all the motivation that I needed. That's real. Uh, I share in that. I share in that enthusiasm. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little piece of advice, and this is to any any of the fathers that are out there who want to be good fathers and who gonna do it no matter what. Um, a lot of times we say, "I want to give my kids all the stuff that I didn't have," mm -hmm. and that cool, you know what I'm saying. But what's more important is us teaching them all the oh, things no, sure. that we didn't yeah, know. No. Yeah, I mean. Cause the stuff, man, you can that get too. the stuff. Stuff For sure. come and go. Man, I remember one time, man, it was Christmas too. Man, this shit funny here. I remember uh, it was it was Christmas and my oldest sons, Messiah and, and Damani. Yeah. So I, I spent, I was going hard. It was early, early in my career, man. But, you know, I was still kind of, you know, putting it together and making a way. So put it together, man, for them to have Hot Wheels and all kinds of shit for them probably for their second birthday. And I'll be damned if I come back in there and find them playing with the boxes. These motherfuckers are here <laughs> playing with the boxes and the paper. Already. Leaving the, 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 the cars and the toys, they over here, these motherfuckers. I could have just brought you a box. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't really like you ain't really tripping on the, the toys, toys for real. All. You just want some shit in here to do. Just to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, as Cause, the cause, Cause you know material shit don't matter until it nah, ain't there. For sure. You know what I'm saying? When the shit ain't present, that's when it. Nah, you gotta teaching them gems that they can live with. Absolutely. That's definitely what I do. I'm raising a young gentleman. You know. That was up, for man. Sure. I commend you for that as a all young right. father, man. Being committed. Sure. You know what I mean? Definitely gonna have the education I never had. All that. Yeah. Sure. My son in private school. You know, that I don't wanna play that. Trying to send my son Harvard Yale, you know. Now tell me this. Now speaking of Harvard Yale, now so uh, if, if for your son to get the best education, like how do you feel about? It? Cause you are, you know, you you took your shahada, right? Yeah. You, you know, you're a devout mm -hmm. uh, man of Islam, mm -hmm. uh, which I respect. Um, but how do you feel about sending our children to be educated by the oppressor? 
because going to Harvard, going to Yale, they gonna receive mm -hmm. the top class education, but it's gonna be coming from the motherfucker that wanna teach you mm -hmm. only what they want you to know. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I feel like I gotta teach him everything outside of that. That's real. You feel me? So that's why I think my responsibility kick in. And you know, like he just did it finesse his way through life regardless and just get that education. That's right. I can dig it. I know Malcolm X, he said something, and I paraphrase it. He said uh, something like, as long as we continue to send our children to be educated by our oppressor, we'll forever be lost. Mm -hmm. Was that saying? before he was? I don't know, bro. I have yeah. to check the date on that quote. Um, but, you know, it, it's a lot to be said, and I say that because if you look at you know, I look at my brothers and, and, and sisters in, in the Jewish faith, mm -hmm. you know, you will never, ever, ever, ever catch any, any person of the Jewish faith sending their children to a school that educates them or teaches them that Hitler was a hero. That should have never happened. You know what I'm saying? But we send our kids to school, sometimes private school, sometimes public school. Mm -hmm. And they teach our kids that these motherfuckers who lost the Civil War are motherfucking heroes no, still. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I wonder, you know, and it's just me brainstorming. There ain't no right or wrong answer. Why in the fuck do you think that is for real? Why? What's so different about us? Man, I wouldn't even know. Okay. They told me to say this shit too. Yeah, that's you know real. Know I mean? Like I, I wouldn't real. even know. Cause. You know what's a better question? What was it? When did you learn it, man? What they teaching me is some bullshit, and you knew you had to get man, outside education. Look, I've been uninterested in that shit. To be honest with <laughs> you, be honest, I wasn't never interested in that shit. I ain't do too good. I'm. All, I was always, you know, a smart young nigga, but right. I ain't graduate, so that's why it's my duty to make sure my son do. Right. You yeah, me neither. Like, me neither. I ain't graduating. I got a son that's a junior in Georgia State, man. You know what I'm saying? I got a, a daughter that's a freshman in Georgia State. So, you know, I'm I'm proud that they that they continue oh, that's amazing. further past my education. But it just certain shit to make me tap my no, tip and scratch my head. Sure. I remember when I caught the teacher ass when they were teaching us about the damn pilgrims and shit. And it was early, you know, when that it was Christopher Columbus or some shit like that. And they said something like Christopher Columbus discovered America. They were greeted by the Native American. Wait a minute, hold up. If you discover some shit, how some people greet you? How were you greeted by some motherfuckers if you discovered yeah, something? Teaching. I want to do that still teach though. They told they me hell, that too. yeah, they probably still do. Sure. So I so I raised my hand and you know what I'm saying, of course at this time, I'm just trying to find a way to be disruptive, get the get the clad to laugh. I'm like, I probably said something like, oh hell no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just 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 being loud and disruptive. But what I was saying was absolutely true, and she had no she had no rebuttal. So of course I got set I, I got set outside the class for disrupting, you know, disrupting the class and keeping the other kids from learning the bullshit they were teaching. But I honestly feel that the curriculum of 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 the school system most time, public and private, is there to kill the confidence in young black men and women. They want to go ahead and beat you down, make you conform to whatever these rules, restrictions, conformities, this seal, this glass seal and they put over you. Now, 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 you got to do it this way. Yeah. You know That's what I'm saying? I remember I also, got, I also got in trouble a long time, uh, uh, well, I ain't getting in trouble actually, I got the teacher to walk out this time, about showing my work in algebra. You remember, if you made it as far as, I was good yeah, at math, yeah, so I made sure. it an algebra. So you remember they used to make you have to show your work mm -hmm. and work out the problem? Like, bro, I got the motherfucking answer, man. Yeah. I ain't got to show you how to do all this how shit, bro. Yeah, hey, man, is the answer right or no? Yeah. You know, and then, you know what I'm saying? So I think that they trying to program children's minds mm -hmm. to do into things thinking the way they deem appropriate, mm -hmm. into, you know, solving solving problems and 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 you know, and, and treating situations the way the curriculum says you should treat it. Instead of allowing kids, allowing us 
to to rely on our magnificence. Mm-hmm. You did. That's why I was very important in you know fatherhood, motherhood. To sure. do your job. I think that parenthood <laughs> is more important Boy, than institutional for education. Sure. Me too. You dig what I'm saying? Because. Uh, yeah. If you take a motherfucker who all he did was go to school and he ain't really had no guidance at home for real, but he, you know, he went as high as Harvard or, man, this motherfucker ain't gonna stand a chance yeah. with a motherfucker who stayed, who had, who been groomed mm-hmm. from birth nah, by people lost. who could show him the things he need to know to get out there and get it. I know plenty of people, man, who went to school, got their got they nah, diplomas and too. degrees. Trying to figure out, man, how they gonna get a job, mm-hmm. what they gonna do with it, and what I mean, and might work for us. You dig what I'm saying? <sighs> Shit. And you know, I seen it all. I think our generation might have had, you know, what I'm saying, probably I, my generation and y'all generation had the most successful dropouts. I remember being told, man, if I dropped out of school, I was gonna be begging for begging for money on the side of the road. Yeah, I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting. Yeah, but. I think that, you know, young men who dedicate themselves to education, evolution, and uh, and commit themselves to change and challenge themselves. And that's a big thing, the commitment. You that's dig what I'm plot. saying? To commit yourself to change and challenge yourself to be better than you were yesterday. That's greater than any, any, any talent or skill you could possibly have. Uh, for sure. Another thing. Coming from the, the the freshman class, you know, in fifteen, so you you uh, you twenty seven, right? Mm-hmm. You, you about to be twenty seven coming up. Um, twenty eight. You about to be twenty eight. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! So you getting in it good? So y'all ain't the young niggas no more, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was one time, you know, y'all used to what's up, unk? Yeah, yeah, they calling you unk now. Nah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. How does that feel? It feel good though. I, I I always carry myself as a man before anything, so. I wasn't never scared to be a man, you know, like, responsibility always been my job. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, I think we gotta, we, we, we really do have. That's all that come with age. We gotta instill it in the youngsters. The idea of this shit is to get old. Mm-hmm. The idea is to grow old and, and, and lead, guide, and direct your family, the next generation, as many generations as you as can. As you could. You For sure. what I'm saying? As long as you can stick around. Get old unless you have an opportunity to die for a cause. You know what I'm saying? Get old, stay here, be here for your family, and direct the path of, of your lineage. That's the shit that I think need to be promoted more than anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that we surrounded by so much death in our environments mm-hmm. that it just kind of seep through our music. And, the, and even uh, in the industry now too, though. That's real. Yeah, it should just see. I mean, because the music has always been about our environment. And our environment has always been surrounded by death. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's always just it's coming up. Yeah. You know, it's coming up because it's always it's it's always it's a it's a tangible reality that we have to live with. Uh, how do you find ways to incorporate all sides of life into your music? I go through so much shit on a daily basis. It's like. My music, like my diary, you feel me? Like all, I don't write it. I just whatever on my mind. That's right. what I I go pour that into that. Like I don't know how to lie on that shit. Everything I say just a hundred percent correct. You know, like mm. I ain't dreaming. I ain't you know no imagination, no nothing. It's been like that from the start. So and you that's did. the connection I feel like that I got with my fans. They know like okay, even if he ain't the most skilled, you know, it's unique, unique voice, unique style. But what he also saying is authentic, you know? Now, what do you mean by the most skill when you say even if he ain't the most skill? Like, you know, like what some you guys could outrap me. You feel me? Like, I ain't what, the who, biggest. By what, by what standard? I mean, I beat them by truth. That's, what my, that's mm. my standpoint on it. Okay. You feel me? No matter how good they is rapping, I beat them by truth. Okay. So, that's what it is. That's 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 a fair point. That's what make me unique. Yeah, that's a fair point. Now you earned your first Grammy nomination, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what the, 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 this year's Grammy. Um, nah, that was about what two or three years ago. That was twenty seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Was that the was that the record with Gold with? Link and Brent Fires? Gotcha. Now, how was it? Cause that's your that was your first big hit 
mm-hmm. commercial hit, right? Other than awesome, okay. I had Beyonce singing that jump. That was like my first one by myself. And that then, might be your biggest hit, then. Nah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. But this one is like four times plat, you know, like that one was a whole different sound, you know, like. So awesome what got the money, got got, got the got money to come. Got got me the buck, like, you right. know, like I was, I, I needed a deal before that, but right. once I got in that space, I could buck and had that leverage to, you know, hold out. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and crew, that's basically what you did with the money. Yeah, that, that that was just a, yeah. That's that. Hey man, ain't nothing wrong with that. And also, you got you got Gucci on the remix, right? Mm-hmm. That's dope. Uh, what you think your connection to trap music or your connection to Atlanta, like? What you think is the source of that that genuine connection with with this culture? There's a lot of real people down here, you know. Like a lot of these dudes, you know, they got a lot of truth to their music too, you know, like. I seen the first hand, like I said, I knew a lot of them before who they were, so I know like what they say, like they ain't capping, you feel me? So it's like, I respect that. And that's them the type of artists that, you know, like I want to associate myself around because, you know, I can't be associated. I'm a cool young guy. I like female this, that, and I'm raising a young man. I can't be associated with this new weird thing that's going on, you feel me? Like let's none talk against about that. that. Let's talk none about against that. it. I know let was but nothing against it to each his own, you know what I'm saying? But let's talk about the new young weird thing. Mm-hmm. To be a youngster yourself and have that to be somewhat the wave of the generation. How do you separate yourself without ost- without ostracizing your peers? <sighs> man. Shit, just ban me, man. Like like I said, I'm more so you know, like, I'm after the females and the money and, you know, that end of it. I ain't into just, like, I don't know, man, dyeing my hair and, you know, just all <laughs> these new things. Like, that ain't really... I and mean, I, I came up on the, you know, admiring street cats that, you know, like, these things that would have never been allowed, you know, so... Well, yeah. I don't feel like it's like too many youngins. You know, that's why I, I respect Lil Baby a lot because, you know, he um, he remind you of an old soul. You feel me? Like shit yep. that was back in the day. Yep. And that's the same thing over here. It's like, I ain't never had to get with nothing. I ain't a get with. You feel me? It ain't nothing that I that's got against, you know, this man or that man because if you unique, you your own person. But all the get with shit, that's what I got a problem with. That's Ooh. where it become a problem at because that ain't you. You right. feel me? It ain't you then. You know, like, Slime, he been that way since forever. Yeah. Slime and Slime, you yeah. know, since the first day I met him. He had on two Miss Max socks and a big ass AK. <laughs> you feel me? No cap. Before he was ever who he is. You feel me? Like, so. I you mean, know, that, like, that, that says a lot, though. I, but I think that. I you, commend the influence. You right. feel me? But. I'm saying me personally. But see, check this out though, right? In every generation, there's the majority and then there's the standout, right? Mm-hmm. So, all right, so if you think about it, in Atlanta when it first started with that, well, I ain't gonna say when it first started, but when we began to get our commercial success, mm-hmm. when we began, we began to get visibility, it kind of started looking like outcast, goody mm-hmm. mob, and like, you know, it was like a conscious kind of thing, or, or, or Jermaine Dupree, or, and, and and so then it began to get a, okay, you had T.I., then you had Jeezy, then you had Gucci, so these were, so this is kind of like the status quo of, yeah, I of how it had look, mm-hmm. right? So somebody's gonna come along here and say, Oh, these motherfuckers is kind of like looking, you know, these motherfuckers is on the same shit. Yeah. I ain't going to beat them at what they do. I got to stand completely out and go far as far left or as far right away from them as possible. Yeah, I seen your interview with Thug. That's what right. you said. Like, I seen and that's y'all when, did everything. Why would I do that? You feel me? So, But see, now it's gotten to a place where once that one person do it and find success, whether that person is Thug, or, or Future, or the Migos, mm-hmm. or 2 Chain, whoever it is. Now, that, now, all of them starting to look the same. Mm-hmm. So the people who cho- who take the route that you take in this generation are the ones who are actually standing out. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Not you can't sure. do weird shit better than thug. I don't give a fuck what yeah. you do. You ain't finna get out here and do no weird shit better than thug. So the best thing you could do is little baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I think that's the beauty of little baby because when everybody else was going the weird route or was going, you know what I'm saying? Little yeah. baby kind of like that's what it is. Exactly. I think you know, and that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Everybody's purpose is important. Ah, for sure. You know, just as important as it was for Thug to, you know, to stand out at the time that he did for the culture, it's important for you and, and the next baby man to stand up the way y'all standing up at this point for the culture. You know, I think everybody's everybody's purpose is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit. So what you gonna what you gonna put you like when you actually get a Grammy? How do you feel about that? How did, how, how how did that feel? Man, it just felt. It was an honor to be nominated, man. That was just amazing feeling having my mom there, and, you know. Right. Just being there, especially, man, I've been on hospital beds, like I said. You been hit up? Cells. I've been hit, stabbed, everything, man. Mm. So, you know. Damn. Man, it was amazing, man. It's a so, blessing to be here, ain't it? Nah, for sure. <laughs> God is the greatest. So, I mean, but, but, but do you, do you when, you, when you hear the nominations come out, right? When you hear the nominations come out, are you surprised by the shit they get wrong? Hell yeah. We should have got that <laughs> motherfucker for sure. Hell yeah. Who beat y'all? Damn. I would. You're going to have to look that one up. I don't, who beat It's so bullshit man? that I ain't even give a fuck who had it at that point. <laughs> man, I God swear. damn. I swear. But, but y'all had a big, yeah, man. Y'all had a big record. That was a big record. motherfucker still spinning to this day. Yeah, it's still, you know, it's a dope record. It's a dope record. One of my favorites. And introduced a future superstar. Into the fold with Brent Fires. Nah, for sure. You dig what I'm saying? Um, I haven't heard as much, you know, from Gold Link, uh, but I need to dig. I need to dig deeper. I think Brent Fires, he be around here. I be seeing him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Moving he around fire. back. Yeah. I want, I'm interested in. I, I'm waiting to hear who beat them. I'm gonna tell you a story after that. Well, while we're doing the digging into the Google, um, the story I want to tell you is. So I got three Grammys, right? Uh, one of them is, you know, extremely important to me. I hold it in high regard. I really, you know what I'm saying? I, um, it's just, you know, to me, it's probably one of the greatest moments in hip hop history. And that's the, the best collaboration for Swagger Like Us. Okay. That was my jump. Yeah, that shit, that was, it was a moment. Now, the other one. Oh, Drake. That, that was Drake worth one it. with Hotline. That was worth it. I ain't, gonna, I ain't know that. Okay. I ain't know that. I fuck with Drake. Come but, on, man. Okay, so, uh, so damn, you going to feel this. <laughs> the time I remember the Grammys the most is the King album. Now, the King album is what you know about that, why you want to go and do that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, just one of my biggest, definitely my biggest album at that time. Mm -hmm. And also the album that I dropped the same week as ATL dropped. And with ATL having the enormous success and the impact on the culture that it had with mm -hmm. the King album having the success and the impact that it had with uh, uh, What You Know ha as a single, having the impact that it had. Man, to get to the Grammys when they have best rap album and goddamn, they gave that motherfucker the ludicrous for I think it was Battle of the Sixes or one of his albums. Yeah. Don't get don't get me wrong, Ludacris is a phenomenal artist, and I feel like he did deserve he does deserve to have his celebration and his accolade. But that year, yeah, that was my motherfucking year. <laughs> that was my year. You know what I mean? So really, the other the other Grammys that I have were tainted by the fact that I know I was supposed to get that motherfucker yeah. and it didn't happen. You know what I mean? but So I can see how motherfuckers feel, you know, like, mm -hmm. about the Grammys and how they feel like they're just a little bit out of touch. Yeah, I left after that. You left? Hell yeah. yeah was, it, was it televised? Because that's the difference. Yeah, it was televised. See, you know what I'm saying? I was out. See, one of mine was tell at least that year. Let's just talk about that year. So one of my one of my uh, nominations was televised, but then the other one I had already won before the show even started. Yeah. So I got the call. I was like, yeah, man, you got one. I was yeah. like, shit, hell yeah, it's going to be a good night. For sure, for sure. <laughs> you did. And so, but the thing is, it wasn't but one of them that was televised, though. And, I, and, and that one, 
I say, oh, man, these people tried it then. I wonder if I fix my face. I'm going to go back and Google see what happened. I still think we should have got ours, too, for sure. You Even still, though Drake won it, I still think it should have been I us. Because I don't the, hear how a lot of I like me over everybody. Day. I don't I give a damn. I to you. I that mean, you know, crew, that bitch ringing off. That's, hey man, that's listen, a cultural record, man. I think that uh, you suppose as a, as a, as an artist, you supposed to like you over everybody. Oh, go. Cool. You know what I mean? You supposed to have respect for other people, but shit, I like me over everybody. I don't give a damn. Um, what's next? Man, just How you gonna celebrate work. your birthday, man? Man, I'm going out the country. Anywhere in particular? Would you like to share? Man, <laughs> <laughs> hell nah. That's, that's a no. I don't think they could get the drop on that, but it's gonna be a movie, man. It's gonna uh. be a real movie out there, man. One of my biggest, cause this was a hard year for me. You know, I just lost my granny, my uncle, mm. back to back. Sorry to hear that, bro. But yeah, you know, I'm a champ, man. You that's know, right. We celebrate, man. That's right. That's right. I think, man, the loss of life is tough, bro. The loss of life but is it tough. But it gotta happen. Absolutely. That's when you learn life. The loss of life is tough, I mean, but at the same time, it's so many lessons. You learn so much appreciation. You know what I mean? And it's so it's so humbling and so spiritual, so grounding. Uh experiencing that level of loss. Now, cause I, I would compare uh, I don't really know much about your relationship with, with your uncle or your granny, but I know how I felt when I lost my sister, my sister Precious. And of course everybody tore up around me and you know what I'm saying, I had my own feelings and you know, keeping it together, you know, being what I need to be for the women and the children and the family and whatnot. Uh, but man, that's some shit that I never replaced. That like I've I lost something that I'll never have in my life again. You know what I'm saying? Like my sister was the one who knew more more about my father's side of the family. Told me about you know when my daddy was running numbers and how this happened back in the seventies and sixties. And you know now this is the thing that went down. See because you're such a such. You know what I mean? And that's a whole part of history that. I don't have no more, you know what I'm saying, that I can't plug into that way. Uh, and I think it take us too long to realize that as young black men, yeah. you know what I mean? No, I definitely make you appreciate life. You seem like somebody who always, you know, uh, found appreciation in sitting down next to old people and talking. Nah, no, for sure. Yeah. I like to learn, man. Yeah. That's one thing about me, man. That's I ain't what... never been like, you know, just a know it all. That's what I always tell people, man, because people always say, Tip, how you how you learn all them ro all, all them fucking words and how you know so much? How you know all these sayings and wow. and you know, they always accounted or remind me that I was in prison. And yeah, yeah, I did some time and I did read. Uh and I still read. And as much as I learned reading, I can't say that I've ever learned more from anything than I have from just having conversations with different people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's more words I've learned from just having conversations, being in conversation. I'll give you an example. Apoplectic. The word apoplectic means, uh, I think I've used it before on the word of the, the word of the week here. Anyway, so apoplectic means uh, angered beyond the ability to speak. You know what I mean? It's like if your mama say, what? <laughs> See, that's apoplectic. I learned that word in conversation. Talking to my partner KP, you know what I mean? We were just having a discussion. I, I, I forget what what we were talking about. And he said, man, I was apoplectic. I say, excuse me, come again? Say what? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> he said, apoplectic. You don't know what that means? I say, no. Nah. He said, I, I thought, surely you knew that one. And he shot it to me. I say, well, I'm definitely going to put this in the lexicon. I appreciate it. Uh, but it's moments like that. Just I ain't just going to let him get that off on me and not come back to it and say, hey man, what that word mean? Yeah. I learned more words like that than I have reading really? any dictionary, any book. Just living life, man. Taking the time to pull <coughs> up and just sit back, man, and, and, and have a discussion with an open mind, you know, with a motherfucker for no reason at all, man. I think that shit teach you more than anything in the world. Oh, sure. Who do you think is, you know, uh, the wisest person you've ever spoke to? My mom. 
Mm, for sure. Mm. I have to say, I don't know, man. It'll be between, I got a three-way tie between Ambassador Andrew Young, uh, Mr. Harry Belafonte, and the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. You know what I'm saying? I think those three probably are three. And right. Quincy Jones, too. I spoke. Like, those are three, uh, the four of the wisest conversations I've ever had. Just talking about times that I didn't exist and talking about things that I had absolutely no knowledge of. You know what I'm saying? When a motherfucker be talking, kicking so much game, you be like, man, I can't say shit, man. Yeah. All right. Yep. <laughs> I can't wait to meet Farrakhan. Yep, showing up. Man, look, hey, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna put no cap on it. Um Man, that is the most powerful black man I've ever seen in my life. I ain't lying. I ain't I ain't I ain't I ain't put no cap on it. Yeah. And and probably one of you know, and, and one of the most consistent. You know what I mean? Bro, every time I've seen him, uh, first time was, you know, I was going through my case and whatnot, and um, I think this was before I actually went to court and got my sentence, uh, you know, got my time or whatever. Yeah. And he invited me. He was in town. He invited me, you know, to come to a hotel. So, of course, when I turned, as soon as I turned into – like, I guess the valet of the hotel, my phone rang. Brother, uh, you made it yet? Uh-huh. Yeah, just actually, I'm just making it. Okay, cool. Well, brother said this, said this right there waiting on you. And as soon as I open the door, hey, uh, bro, you here to see Minister Farrakhan? Okay, brother. And then they ask who's with me. Who's, who's is this brother with you? <laughs> you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Uh, and and hit me with hand sanitizer. They're pre-COVID now. Uh-huh. They hit you with the hand sanitizer as soon as you get out the car before COVID. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Then it got, and you know what I'm saying? You you go through about three, four checkpoints, you know? And uh, I was with my partner, my partner Doug. Uh, he wasn't Muslim, he, you know what I'm saying? Doug, you know, was was a, a Bible-thumping Christian. Yeah. Uh, nah, nah, I'm just playing, man. Doug a real nigga, but he come out of Christian family. All right, but my, I, was my, I was with my partner Snake at the time, right? And uh, Snake is a devout. Uh, man of Islam. And so, me, Snake, Doug, we walking, getting out the elevator. Some kind of way, they, Doug got held up at the elevator. Yeah. Me and Snake went in. I turned around like, what Doug at? And <laughs> Doug was like, man, the folk would not let me in. Can you believe it? Said, Why not? His name went on the lid. Because we, oh, okay. we, we told him it was just going to be me and yeah. Snake. Doug was just awesome, man. I'm going to just come on with y'all. You know what I mean? I want to meet him too. And yeah. they were like, nah, yeah, bro. Nah. We weren't expecting you, my man. <laughs> but anyway, so we get in there, man. And he invite me. It's always like, you know, you know, for a meal. And we had some of the most eloquent discussion. And he told me, say, now... If you have to do some time. And that was the first. I was like, God damn, uh, Minister, why can't I <laughs> not have to do no time? For why can't they see my good efforts and just let it walk? Like, well, that ain't. Listen, so if you, should you have to do some time, that's going to be the best thing for you because you're going to use it to your advantage. And the man had just always been so, like, just welcoming. You know what I'm saying? He always had just embraced. And he never asked me for nothing. Yeah. Ain't never been no, hey, let me get some and da-da-da. Ain't never. Never. But always just so willing to share. And he tried to visit me when I was locked up. And he tried to visit me. When I when I first turned myself in, man, I checked in. I turned myself in, man. Uh, and, and, you know, straight from R&D to when they walked me to my, to my, uh, my unit. Lay my shit on my bed. The first move, well, cats could go out to the yard or whatever. A Muslim came and found me. Brother, uh, Brother Mustafa, which is, you know, the minister's son. Brother Mustafa and the minister told us to expect you and we'll take, we'll take good care of you. I say, bro, I don't need nothing. I'm good. I appreciate it. I'm just going, you know, well, I'm just letting you know, brother. You need anything, just holler. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Thank you. And then I got a request. 
Minister Farrakhan is trying to visit you. I said, well, put him on the list. <laughs> and it was like, well, then they came back and said, well, it came from the warden. The warden say he can't, he can't come because because yeah. we can't secure him. I said, oh, you think he's the one that needs the security <laughs> in here? So moments like that let me know, bro. It's so high up you can go, bro. It's so high up you can go because I don't think that. I'm not saying that Minister Farrakhan is the richest man that I've been around. Mm -hmm. I've been around some very rich men. Very rich men. They did not feel as powerful and protected as he did. Now, I don't know how much money. You know, I don't know. I have no idea. And I don't even care. I know the power, the influence. I know the influence. There's deep in some money. You dig what I'm saying? I felt like I pulled into like, you know, just like when I land in 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 Ghana and and the diplomats of of the African diplomats of Ghana greet me at the airport and take me to see the prime minister. And you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the vibe you get around Minister Farrakhan. You dig what I'm saying? But I definitely believe, you know what I'm saying, y'all will be crossing paths soon. Cause I think you the kind of energy that he Oh, he sure. find himself around. Um, Ted, let's talk about your latest project, man. Young Hefe came out this September, doing great numbers, been you know been received very well, man. Um, I hate when people ask me this shit, man. I really I I, I don't like it, but because I don't like it, I'ma ask you. <laughs> What's your favorite song on the project so far? Um, and why? Probably paint the town red or um to her for Hollywood. Paint the town red or two hood for Hollywood. Yeah. Hey, but what people don't know is that you are a um a burgeoning entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh you have not only your own strand, you got your own strand out where marijuana is legitimate. Yeah. Oh, actually you live in DC where marijuana is legitimate. I live in LA. You live in LA? Yeah. Okay. I uh, live both, actually. Yeah, back coastal. Yeah, I'm, I'm back and forth. Okay, so that, that that Grammy nomination has been good to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that independence, that independence, man. Okay, mean a yeah, lot. okay, even more yeah, so. For sure. Independence has been Especially good to you. Especially at a time like this. That's right. Yeah. Now tell me, um, how do you choose what 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 different businesses to invest your hard earned money in? I invest in what I believe in. Like I'm doing a a new food spot in D.C. You know, I got my label kicking off. We about to drop our project next. Um, mm. The Hefe OG, one of the best-selling strands in LA right now. Hefe OG. Yeah. So anybody blowing on Hefe OG? Get that at any cookies, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That, you say that, any cookies? Any cookies. Any nice, cookies. Any cookies. Yeah. You say any cookies. Any cookies. Any dispensary in Cali, for real. Okay. Got you, yeah. got you. Got you. Got you. But cookies. You saying any cookies got? The Hefe, the Hefe OG. for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, those, I thought you were my partner. Any, right any cookie strand is your strand. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, nah. okay, okay. I'm about cookies, to say, you know, we just, that just, we got damn, that, that changed the price of pussy just now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope uh, that was the case. Shit. You dig what I'm saying, yeah, man? Shit, yeah. bro. Hey, hey, look, bro. This thing leads to the next hey, nah, thing. This is going to lead to too much. That's Great right, thing, for sure. And also, man, you know, you 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 a fashion aficionado. Yeah, I'm gonna do my own line too. Twenty one. Okay. I'm tired of spending money on this shit. I spend hundreds of thousands on clothes a year. Yeah. I don't get this shit for free like these other artists. I ain't reached that level yet, but it should be coming, man. But until I do, I got to do my own thing, man. I mean, bro, let me ask you this: What kind of line do you think you would make? High fashion. High like fashion. the shit that I wear, yeah. Okay. I'm a, what make I'm it high fashion? Quality. You know, like, it ain't really about what they got on it. It's just really about the quality, the fit, the cut, you know, all that shit. Like, mm. I'm deep into that shit. So. Okay. What's your favorite brands? And tell mm. me what you like about Like, tell me what item you like from the brand. I like Rick Owens a lot. Okay. You know, it's simple. It's, you know. Cozy. Tell me your favorite, like your favorite item from Rick Owens. Um, cashmere sweaters, the sweatpants. They always got some unique sweatpants. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the shoes too. The shoes are cool. They last forever. 
Um, Louis, Louis Vuitton for sure. Okay. You know, like since Virgil went over there and collaborated with him, man, it's kind of been like a no-brainer. They've yeah. been killing everything. Yeah, man. for sure. Yeah. And you know, everything, Prada, whatever, any all high fashion, man. I pretty Christian much. Christian Dior got been doing their thing. Like. Christian Dior been doing their thing, but. It's getting oversaturated. At this it is. Point, man. It is. So it is. Like, Anytime, but that's how you know. But that's how you know, no motherfucker doing like, their thing. Yeah. That's how you know, motherfucker doing their thing when when everybody got it. All right. Yeah, so they, they didn't. All right. So that when they that was a left, fucking success, right, guys. Move on. For sure. For you sure. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. It worked. Let's move on. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I I have a lot of respect for Greg Lauren. Yeah, I like Greg Lauren a lot. He an underdog. Yeah, yeah. yeah I fuck with Chris for Lauren. a few years. Yeah. I like Sakai. You know that's Ralph Lauren's nephew. Capital. Nah, I did not know. Greg that. Lauren is Ralph Lauren's nephew. That makes sense now. So if you notice, all of Greg Lauren's shit, it be old shit that's cut up and kind of, yeah, yeah. You know, put together. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? So he'll go into some of the vintage inventory of his uncles and grab materials or pieces that you know what I mean. He done took shirts and turned them into jogging pants yeah. and, you know, like that kind of different shit. Uh, I fuck with Greg Lauren. That's probably one of my favorite designers right now and uh, probably one of my favorite pieces from him. Capital Fire is a Japanese brand. What's it's it? Capital. Capital? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like the Greg Lauren trenches. If you ever catch any of them Greg Lauren trench coat, yeah. man, get them. If you got, if, if you can, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got Whether Greg you can buy it. I got one. Well, not, not you, I'm talking to them. Yeah. I know you can have <laughs> shit, man. You four million up, nigga. I know you can do what you need to do. But if you can buy it, you know, or get it from a booster, however you need to do it, but just know this shit here is some of the most stylish yeah, it, shit. It, it's quality, for sure. If it, everybody been asking me what trench I had on in the ring video with Thug, man, yeah. that was that was a Greg Lauren motherfucker. And also you make them jogging pants, them goddamn mm -hmm. denim jog, jogging suit. With the Adidas mix, yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool shit. So yeah, shout out to him. him. He ain't paying us shit, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just putting his name out there so he can continue to charge us $3,500 for jogging pants. Yeah. All um, these motherfucking bands. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I got to do my own thing, man. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. you know, it don't really cost that much, to be honest. Not uh, when you're you doing, you know, you're getting money. Like It you, don't cost you know, that so. much. It don't cost that much, man. It don't cost me that much to be fresh. You know what I'm saying? I do it because, you know, we have a love for this shit. But to be honest with you, bro, man, I can get fresh in a champion hoodie. And nah, for some sure. all white it ain't even 97s. about the brands. It ain't. I'm just a high fashionable guy, but I really can throw on anything. I of wear course. Carhartt. I wear. Okay. You know, I, I mix this shit up. That's know? right. I got That's a right. Zara T with should. this Prada shit. This shit. That's you know, how I, I got to blend this shit together. Looking good though. You know, yeah. You got to make this shit. You dig what I'm saying? You know, like. For sure. Hey man, you look like a. Just, hey, just, look, just, just, you gotta know how to. It shit gotta be fashion. in you, not on you. But and, and, and he ain't got no black Air Force Ones on, y'all. I know y'all looking at him like he got some black Air Force Man got, you know, high fashion man, down man, to the carpet. On, you hear me? So It been that way, though. I stepped in this shit How many like black designers or, you know, black fashion brands do you fuck with? V-Long, my boy, okay. Bari. I support Bari 100%. Um, my boy in D.C. got a brand called Fortune coming up. Mm. You know who I like? I like a dude named, uh, it's a nigga named Brick Owens. I know Brick Owens. Yeah, Brick Owens. Sure. He dope as a I'm motherfucker. He coming, yeah. hey man, he he dope as nah, shit. Nah, they got some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. It's called, um, damn. He dope as shit, you know what I mean? Called, yeah, but I know, I know what you're talking Heidi about. Heidi Aki, that's, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's, that's my affiliation, yeah. you know, my affiliate. And, you know, they out here in Atlanta, they do more bespoke which is like you go and you pick the shit out you make the suit okay. custom to fit um that who you know what i'm saying who do all my suits and shit right. so i fought with them um let's see man of course we all know man you know what i'm saying uh off white doing their thing right. you know what i'm saying you know yeezy doing their thing like i don't but i ain't never wore no yeezy clothes you wear yeezy clothes when, at first I did, but I like Kanye a lot. I can't lie. I can't fuck with I can't fuck with the clothes. I like I like, like I like the shoes though. Feel like slave like slave guilt. <laughs> I ain't lying. Like hey, look, bro, I ain't bullshitting you now. I, I was in Roots. 
I was in the remaking of Roots when they remade that shit, and everybody was like, "Why the fuck did you do it?" I did it. Well, just really to push my to push the envelope for me as an actor. But the clothes I saw there and the clothes I saw people wear, cause I didn't wear that kind of shit. My, you know, I I wasn't no fucking slave. You know, I didn't play a slave, and that was the only thing I could say. I ain't playing no fucking slave. But I was a motherfucker who ran away, and from the time the camera hit me to the time I, I was a free man the whole time my character was on camera. And so that was a big thing for me. But anyway, but the people I saw other motherfuckers wear, the shit I saw other motherfuckers wear was very similar. Striking resemblance <laughs> to the shit that Kanye sells and has made, like, you know, multiple cool billions yeah, sure. and Yeezy but I still support the brother you know what I'm saying uh, simply because I support his brilliance yeah. you know what I'm saying any motherfucker who can get them come from a rapper and, and he's the one who started motherfuckers they doing these collaborations mm -hmm. the, the the Kanye West collaboration with Louis Vuitton Nike Adidas. I mean yeah you right but the collaboration with Louis Vuitton Kanye West collaborating with Louis Vuitton that opened so many doors for motherfuckers who wanted to do fashion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The man, you would never catch it. That was never a nigga who could have got in with Louis Vuitton and did a shoe. You know what I mean? So that opened doors for, you know, people like Virgil and people like Travis and other motherfuckers to come in and have their way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, I think fashion is kind of like, man, that shit is, it depends on your energy, right? No, for sure. That shit like is, that, that, it's, it's an extension angry. of your personality, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So what do you think your, what do you think your fashion says for your personality? It describes me all the way, like, you know, like, shit. I ain't really got to say too, like, I ain't really got to say too much to get a situation, you know, like, my, my swag speak for itself, you feel mm. me? Like, with females, whoever, like, and you know, like, people accept a, a clean cut young man, you know, like, it's, it's a nice presence to be around, you know, like, you mean, I don't know, it's just something, it's, it's, it make it, everything just better, man. You feel better when you throw that shit on everything, man, like, hmm. I don't know, man, it's something about them clothes, man. I mean, you know, the it's something to it, bro. Everything. It's some. It, 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 it make you feel good, man. It, it is some to it, but I don't think it has anything to do with the price of the garment. Nah, it's just about you looking nice. Shit, it ain't even about what is it. Yeah, shit, it's about putting it together. Fuck. I mean, I think that. Uh, I think a lot of us throw money at shit. But that's people that are... To keep from having to put effort into it. It ain't in them. That's, that's, that's the, you know... A lot of motherfuckers buy everything off the mannequin. mannequin. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Just give me the shit on the mannequin. Give me all that shit. Give me that shit in my size. Just to keep them from having to go through, like, different uh, 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 item at a time. Yeah. To find which ensemble works for them. They just want to buy it off the mannequin the same way that the store intended. <laughs> and I don't really fuck with that. I don't like nah, that. I don't fuck with that either. Hell nah. So do you mitch match brands? Like do you? Sometimes. It okay. all depends. It depends man, how I'm feeling that day. So are you one of those guys that wear Nike pants with Air nah, Jordans? I ain't one of those Those guys. are fucking psychopaths. That ain't Listen, one. That ain't. Hide that ain't, your kids, hide that, your that, wife that, that from a motherfucker cool who right wear that, Adidas sweatpants nah, and Air you, Jordans. You that, Listen man. bro. You can't do these that. These are man. different kinds of individuals. They, yeah. they, they, they brains are scrambled. These different motherfuckers. I ain't lying. Yeah, you got it. Put that shit together, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now, what do you think about what do you think about like let's say Nike with Puma? You wouldn't do Nike with That's Puma. Tacky. Either? Hell nah. I would do Nike with Puma. I'm doing Nike, <laughs> doing Nike and Reebok right now. You know, it just you know, depends on. But how I you but put I will not together, do Nike man. and Adidas though, huh? Yeah, absolutely. It I mean, depends on how you I put be, this shit together, man. Now, you say Kirby um, Jean Raymond. Damn. Kirby Jean what's Raymond. His, what's his um brand? Yes, bruh? Pure Moss. He he's definitely on my list too. Yes. Black designer. For okay. Sure. Well, Pure I Moss. buy a lot of his shit, but yeah. I can't pronounce it. That why I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't <laughs> say it out loud. But I have those Reeboks on, and I got some Nike sweatpants, and I feel fine. 
But that's different because they're I'd different never. type of Reeboks. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, they're yeah. They're not just a regular Reebok jumps, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get like, it, I get it. Then okay, it would have okay. threw it off, you Another know? Another like, one of my favorite pairs, they they got some Vetamin Reeboks. Vetamin yeah, has I, a collaboration with Reeboks. Like they got the handwriting on the motherfuckers. I've been for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fuck with them too, man. I fuck with them too. But shit, man, seem like we got them shop out the same stores. Hey, look, man. <laughs> I do this shit, man. <laughs> on a whole another level, man. Hey, man, what's the most extravagant purchase? That you've ever had? Probably them Richard Millies, man. But them Richard Millies. That plural? Richard Millies. You I ain't finna like, do that. I ain't finna do that. But I just can't do it. And I saw what you said here. Uh, you said, I don't know rap. I can't tell you a Tupac song. <laughs> what? <laughs> that what you said? It's it right here. It's in quotation marks. But at the same time, you brought it together by saying, but you put on some go-go, and I know it word for word. That's why I feel like I got my own sound, or a DC sound. It was created right here. I didn't want to become a rapper because of Lil Wayne or Master P. Now, they would, they would, they, 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 oh, for sure. Okay. That, that's a fact. All right. That ain't okay. Now, but you know you can kind of you could get some shit without even know that you getting some shit. Cause I can listen to you right now, hear your style, hear how you put your shit together, and that that, that you have been you found some ways to, yeah, be, influenced. to be influenced. Right. For sure. Not saying that no one ain't influenced me, but what inspired me was my culture. Mm. You know, the whole go go thing. But man. that's great because you have to be grounded yeah. in something. Man, that probably was a, a years ago statement. But, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what did influence me, the things that I went through. Shout out to Dina. Heard, Shout out to me? Dina and Toyon who put together the information yeah, that yeah, I have they, in they, front they of me, man. Do, they you know what I'm saying? Man. I just happened to have been looking through that and saw that as I was listening to the song. And I said, well, this is interesting. I Not, think, but, but I think it's good I that you say shit like that. I know a lot of Tupac. You know man. a lot of Tupac. Uh, yeah, man, I was in jail singing that Dear Mama every night. I, 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 up, listen, bro. I thought they maybe it was. That a, light, I thought maybe it was an age thing. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't I even didn't, one of them illiterate young guys that's coming up in here like Biggie too. Like, nah, man, you know that man. So what DC you grew up listening to though, bro? She is busy. Like, I, I grew up listening to everything, but a lot of go go majority. Mm. You know, like. They was doing a lot of shout out the biggest shout out the biggest go go artists that you feel like never made it to 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 see they to see they shine or who should get more credit. Um, maybe Lorzo, R.I.P. This mm. guy from my block, you know, he was the first. You know, elite starter, you know, because Gogo was a big thing. So if you was in the Gogo scene, you was like a superstar. It still is. I was coming up. You feel I me? feel like it is, nah, man. It is. It, it, you know why it is? I'm going to tell like you that. why it is. I'm going to tell you why it is still big. Big business kills culture. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? When big business hit any culture, it's dead. So the reason why. Go Go is still what it is. It's so significant to the culture of DC right now. It because it never reached big business. Now, if that shit would have reached big business and got them been as big as hip hop or reggae, I don't feel like it would have been the same so as important. it is right yeah. now. Yeah, it mean a lot. It definitely mean a lot, man. But you know, we had a lot of good, you know, all stars from there like Genghis. He would play in the Wire, so Ooh. it took pl people. Other places, you feel me? Like, um, I don't think you could do a, a story or a movie or a TV show about DC or DMV without including Gogo. Go -Go. Yeah, yeah nah. you got to. I would never even do my story without including Gogo -Go in it. That was a big part Have of Have you my ever life. done a Gogo -Go song? Nah, but I got what? to. I got to. I just haven't done it yet. Got to do it. Yeah, got, got to do to. it at the height, bro. Nah, for sure. Then when it count. Then when it count, bro, you know what I'm saying? I think that them being your roots. Yeah, we got to put that together. We def I've been thinking about that for some years, though. It just never, you know, aligned. Yeah, Not yeah. Yet. I, think that's the, I think that's the play, bro. I feel like 
If it could be a reggaeton, it could be a it's a it's a, nah, it's a motherfucking sure. market for gold. We might bro. could do a whole yeah. That you might dig be what I'm the saying? next big one. Cause sure. reggaeton that got might be the they next came big in as a thing too. like and they got big. Yeah, I feel like the same way they did that shit. The same way Afro beats doing that shit. It the same way Go Go. I feel like Go Go had just nah, as I've big. I've been a thought for a long time. I just gotta, I gotta do it right, man. I gotta do it right. Yeah, yeah. Cause I came from a different generation of Go Go, so it was like a different sound that the world ain't even heard yet. Yeah, like mm. the Go Go that you might have heard or anyone might have heard. It was a generation before me, mm. or generations before me. You feel me? So right. my generation had like a kind of how the the new wave is with the new melodic and cool shit. Like sure, that's the wave that my. So that's why it was easy for me to come in and always catch them beats and be on. That's real. You know, yeah. I think it's important I think it's important for people like you who have a love and appreciation for the culture of it, for the history of it, to kind of introduce it to yeah, your generation sure. and the generations to come. Yeah. Uh I think that's important. We're gonna to put it together shit, for to sure. Shit pushing. But look man, I appreciate you for hanging out with me man. Is this the 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 the, the glizzy OG? Yeah the half A. Oh, the Hefe OG. I'm oh, sorry. The Hefe yeah. OG. Well, Glizzy OG should be the hey, next we're gonna one. Hey, we going to have another Glizzy screen saying? too, for I sure. Bet. Tell me this. When did you start smoking? Man, when I started getting money, it's too much money. For real? Hell yeah. You ain't smoke as a kid? I ain't smoke, like, I ain't drink or smoke. I ain't never think that shit was cool. Was that because of your religious faith? That too. And then, like, you know, just moving to LA and you know. I mean, but going to LA seems like the place where you go to smoke. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of weed going on There's out there. a lot there. of weed. Hell yeah, yeah. The best. The best of the best. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how did you like, you know, so is, I'm just trying to figure out. going through a lot, a lot of responsibility, you know. Motherfuckers asking you for Taking the edge shit. off, just taking yeah, the edge off. Cooling okay. down. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hell yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, I mean like, as you grew up, right, who introduced Islam to you and the discipline of Islam to you? Um, My OGs, you know, like, they were, all of them was Muslim, and I always looked up to them, and they always would drop gems on me about Islam, mm. and me just going to, you know, the facility I was in and sitting down, you know, Sure. Yeah. So you continued during your yeah. during your bid, you continued what you'd already kinda like the seeds that were planted. Yeah, I already had intentions on right converting. Okay. But once I was able to sit down, I was able to learn more and really be sure about that. Got you know? that. Okay. Shit. I remember man, as a youngster, bro, I got put out of school in sixth grade, man, for for not standing up for the pledge. I got suspended. No cap. Yeah. Woodland Middle School, sixth grade. They suspended me for not standing up for the pledge. Uh, and my uncle, I also started eating pork. I started eating pork around third, fourth grade. Yeah. Cause my uncle, he he caught a bed when I was eight, eight years old, nine years old. So of course he get in there, he start kind of uh, submerging himself in information. Mm -hmm. um, unlearning and relearning. And you know, he of course, was was he came across the teachings of Islam, and the first thing he told me about pork, he said, "Do he said take a raw piece of bacon, sit in a club soda, sit it outside, in in you know, in the in the in the temperature, and come back and see what it be." And it was it definitely worms, definitely maggots, yeah. definitely some disgusting shit. That I said, I ain't fucking with that shit ever, ever in life. That ain't me. If I don't know shit else, I know I don't want a part of that. Yeah, yeah, nah. And so then I stopped eating pork. And I remember people like, you know, asking me or talking to me like, you know, crazy. Like, what you mean you don't eat pork? Oh, he think who he think he is? You yeah. don't eat. Like, bro, why is it such a big deal? I don't eat pork. You know what I'm saying? You can enjoy it much as you want to. I don't want none. Yeah, that shit dirty. And like, what, is you Muslim? No, I ain't Muslim. I just don't want the bullshit. Yeah, I don't eat no meat, though. You know what? It took me It took me a long time. I stopped eating meat in 16. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I have a hankering for a chicken wing every now and again, so I, you know, 
I go. I do goddamn break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but 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 I get back on. Yeah, for sure. And I continue in the path. The idea is not to eat chicken every day. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Every goddamn quarter, every three months or so, I will indulge yeah. in a chicken wing dipped in blue cheese. <laughs> so anybody who don't like me for that, fuck you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh Hey, listen, bro. We can sit here and talk all night. Is there anything else that you'd like to speak on? Simply because, man, man like just, this is, you know, this is this is home for me. What would you like the people to know about Shy man, Glizzy? Shy Glizzy, man. We coming, Glizzy Gang, twenty twenty one. You got your artists here with That's, you too, right? Yeah, Tyler, man, Glizzy, Three Glizzy, No Savage. You know, man. That's you know, GG, man. People, now, they know what it is. Now tell me this, right? You having a record label up under you, and you have an artist up under you. How do you know when you're not giving enough and when you're giving too much? Uh, that's a hard one. Okay, well let me tell you. All right, so when when you're not giving enough, motherfuckers don't come to work. To be honest with you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Motherfuckers I, don't show I, up. Motherfuckers ain't in, like, like they not. I got, I'm fortunate enough to have people on my team that show up. No, they like? gonna show up, but I'm talking about longevity. Like, oh, okay. from the time you got in the I, game I, I get, I get what you're to saying. right now, yeah. you know it, what I'm saying? For that period switch. of time, yeah, for, sure. for that period of time, if you're not giving enough in that period of time, of course, motherfuckers show up for a month or a year, maybe even two. Yeah. But for the period of time from where you had a nomination to right now, if you weren't giving enough, I just feel like they 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 wouldn't show up. Yeah, I feel like at that point, fuck them. Cause like I said, I watched one of your dreams where it's like, why would I pay you if I'm outworking you? I feel like I outwork a lot of people that's mm. around me. That's real. You feel me? So I'm still trying to. That brings align me to my, my next. That br- with the right people. That brings me to my next point. You know, you're giving too much. When they show up, but they don't do shit. Oh, for sure. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you don't, if you ain't paying enough, they ain't gonna show up. Or they gonna get to a point where they don't show up. And if you paying too much, they gonna show up, but they ain't gonna do shit. For sure. For sure. I already know. So there's that. And you know, we have a tradition here expeditiously. The tradition is we have a word of the week. Now, the word of the week is usually a word that we pull from the discussion and, you know, we dedicate it to the topic of today. The word of the week, burgeoning, meaning growing or to increase rapidly, to flourish. And what we're going to do is, uh, Shai, we're going we gonna to fucking use it in a sentence so people who are hearing it right now, they can go on and they could repeat it and never give us any credit and pretend like they done known the word their whole life. But that's what we're here for. All right. Shaq um, Lizzie and the artists in the DMV area are burgeoning and creating their own style of music for their generation. What do you think about that? That's a fact. You know what question I ain't asked you? How do the artists today feel about artists like Wale? artist from before you I respect it me personally I don't really know how these youngers expect it respect it but you know like me I'm you know like I've been doing pretty good with my influence absolutely now but what I what I mean when I say that is I always respect the ones that came before me though okay for sure if anything no matter because what? it was a time when niggas from D.C. wasn't getting no shine. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? And Wale kind of put y'all on, kind of showed that y'all were like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he the one who showed me about the the, the phone posits. Yeah. And how it was Nike a D.C. Boots, thing. Nike boots, all that, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know. Even he, the Go-Go. He, he intri- Even Go-Go. He did, he, he yeah. did a yeah, few, yeah, he did a few yeah, attempts yeah. to spread that but out. But I know he ain't necessarily cut from the same. Yeah, he ain't from the same energy mm-hmm. that we, you know, may yeah. represent. And like, for instance, like, you know, 3000 may not be from the same energy that we represent, or uh, Outkast may not, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but we still kind of like respect that is, 
yo, that made a way for me to get now get in here and do. Yeah, that's what I respect the most. Yeah, for we, sure. but then other motherfuckers, I go other places. Uh, they don't even like. As long man. as he shed, he shed the light and you know my direction, so I gotta commend him for that. I fuck with Wale. Yeah, I fuck with Wale too. I fuck with Wale more than anything. You know why? Cause he's being himself. You gotta fuck with a motherfucker who being himself. I fuck with why what excuse me. I fuck with Wale. I fuck with Wiz. I fuck with you know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta be a tough guy. Nah, you ain't fuck gotta be a gangster. Nah. Cause everybody in the world ain't meant to be gangsters. You ain't gotta be no, you know, like me, I ain't no gangster. Yeah. I fuck with people. I kill somebody about my family, but I ain't no gangster. Being they self, man. You know what I mean? Like as long as you being walking in your truth, doing the shit that's true to you, being honest with yourself, and sharing that honesty with the world. That's all I expect from you. You know what I mean? And to be dope. You know what I mean? Uh and I think that I think that you kinda you you, you represent that, bro. Yeah, why well, that dope that. artist, man. Love. Yeah. All right. Shout out to DC, the DMV area, man. Shout out to Shaq Glizzy and the Glizzy gang. You dig what I'm saying? His project, Young Hefe 3 at right now, man. Shout out to 300 Entertainment. Uh this is and has been and always will be expeditiously. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.